Good morning, everyone. I am here today for another live training, and this one is on seeing obstacles as opportunities. You guys know how important I think mindset work is and how it has really and truly helped me transition every aspect of my life and how I see things. A lot of times as women, as humans, as entrepreneurs, we get sucked into victim mode. And that sounds a little bit dramatic and I don't mean it to sound dramatic, but when I talk about the victim mentality, it's that all these things are happening to me and I can't handle it anymore. Instead of seeing all of these challenges or things that come up in life as opportunities, a lot of times we see things, we see challenges, we see mistakes, we see you know, negative things in our life as things that happen to us and as obstacles, things that have blocked us, stopped us from moving forward. Instead of seeing them as opportunities for growth and for learning and for advancement, because ultimately when things happen in our lives that are negative, maybe we make a mistake, maybe we um, actually consider that we have failed at something, even though I don't believe we ever truly fail, I believe that things don't work out and they don't work out for us so that we can learn and grow from those experiences. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. I have a few examples that I wanna walk through and those are going to be related to both entrepreneurship and life, but we're going to start with the entrepreneurship item first, I guess. Um, so let's talk about sales calls and how challenges could be viewed as obstacles when we're talking about connecting with our ideal clients or soulmate clients or trying to encourage them to buy from us on a discovery call or a sales call. So personally, I love discovery calls because it's an opportunity for me to get to know who is out there that's interested in my services, but also most importantly, to get to learn more about other people and those people that are following me. Because a lot of times, especially as a podcast host, we have no idea who's out there listening to our shows unless people are sharing episodes or commenting on our social media content, but we really don't know who's listening to what episode. There's no way to track that. Just like I don't really have a way to see who's here with me on these lives or who views them later so or we don't know who's reading our blog post we don't we can tell who is opening our email that we send out we can tell the click-through rates and all of those things but we don't know most of the time who is watching us who's consuming our content and what value they're perceiving from it so I like discovery calls for that reason that I truly get to know the people that are that are interested in what I'm putting out into the world, what their needs are so that I can then turn around and provide more of whatever that need is that they have. So I personally like discovery calls. And let me just tell you, I have had a lot of discovery calls that didn't close, that I didn't get the client. I've had a lot that I did. But on every single one of those calls, I learned something. And that is the most critical thing is that I took away something that I could improve on the next time I do a call. So let's talk about this a little bit. There is this thought that, you know, success of your business, the success of your business is on the other side of a sales call. And that's false. If you go into thinking about a sales call as this is going to make or break my business, then you're setting yourself up for an obstacle, right? You're setting yourself up for a lack of success for that call. And the reason being is that one sales call is not going to make or break your business. Your business and the success of your business is not dependent on that sales call or discovery call. The success of your business is all of those people out there that are watching you, consuming your content, and just holding on to everything that you say to understand that ultimately they will be coming to you. They will hire you. 
If you think of the hummingbird effect, um, I don't know who's heard this before or not, but my coach taught me this and I think it's just a really cool analogy and I've used it with my clients a lot, that if you have one hummingbird that comes to your feeder, there are at least 10 in the wings waiting to come to that feeder when that hummingbird that's already there leaves. I mean, of course, sometimes you see more than one hummingbird at your feeder, but there, if you see one, there are at least 10 more. So if you see two, there are 20 more. So if you think to yourself, okay, I have one discovery call booked this week, that means there are at least 10 other people out there consuming your content and just waiting to reach out to you when the time is right. So I want to give you that hope instead of you thinking that a sales call is the determining factor for your business long-term, no, it's not. It's an opportunity for you to learn and grow and it's an opportunity for you to serve. So when you get on a discovery call, think of it as an opportunity to serve, to help that person, give them a takeaway that they can now implement in their life or their business to move forward and do something really great instead of being stuck. Okay, so when you do a sales call, instead of if you do not get that client, and let's face it, very few people have a 100% conversion rate on a discovery call. There are some people out there, I'm sure, I don't know any of them, but I think it's really important for us to address what happens if you don't get that client and what happens if you do get that client. So let's start with the, the not getting the client first. So if you don't get that client first on that discovery call, what can you do? Uh, here's what I do and here's what I'm gonna recommend you do. You do a deep dive into that call. If you can record the discovery call, that's awesome because then you can go back and, and listen and really acknowledge what you did right, what you said right. Did you handle the objections? Did you coach the person around the objections that they were giving you? Maybe it's time, maybe it's money. Those are the two biggest objection, objections that people hear on discovery calls. So did you? how did you address those objections? What information did you give that solves a problem for them? Did you give too much information that now they think that because you gave them that information, that solution, they don't need you? Not that you should ever limit the amount of information that you give someone, but remember, this is a discovery call. This is a free call. This is free, a free service that you're providing. So you're giving information, but you don't want to give the world away in this call either because you want to have a mutual respect that you know, you deserve to be paid for this value that you're providing, for this information that you're giving. So this is their opportunity to get to know you and the goal of this call is to decide at the end of this call, are we gonna work together or are we not? No decision is a bad decision. A decision is great, whether it's for the good or for the bad, because the ultimate at the end of the call, if they didn't hire you, a couple of things happen. Number one, you led them to a decision, which is empowering and inspiring and that is awesome. Maybe they didn't hire you, but now they know more about what they need and more about the, the type of person that they need to help them. If they didn't hire you, don't look at it as the end all be all and an obstacle in your business that you don't know how to do sales calls. Make an evaluation of that call to see where you can learn and how you can change so that the next time you have a better opportunity for closing. And think of it as, and just as that, an opportunity for growth. But don't only look at the, the negative call, the call that didn't end in a sale, don't look at that as the only time you do a deep dive because we also have opportunities to learn if when we do a call that was a success where we did sell our product or service. So it's very important to look at any of the, either of those situations as an opportunity to learn and grow. The negative call that did not end up in a sale is not an obstacle for the long-term success of your business. And you can you have a choice as to how you perceive that. You can take that in on yourself and say, oh my gosh, I messed up, I'm not good at this, I'm never gonna get a client, I don't know how to sell, I don't know how to close. And you can downward spiral because our brains are to look for negative things, two thirds more likely that, that more than they look for positive things. That's negativity bias. So if you choose to go down that path and perceive that call as a failure, to perceive that call as an obstacle versus an opportunity, then you are going to set yourself up in this place of doubt. So for future calls are not going to go well either. So, okay, that's enough on the sales call. Let's, let's talk about a bad review or a testimonial. You have an opportunity to respond to that testimonial or review 
in a gracious, kind, generous way that shows anyone else who reads the reviews and the responses how you are caring, you are loving, and that you do provide an inval of invaluable service, like something that is so incredibly valuable, people can't live without it. But you all have an opportunity in that to talk about who your ideal audience is. So if you receive that bad review, don't look at that as an obstacle, look at it as an opportunity to express who you are and who you serve. Because maybe that person that wrote that bad review was someone that wasn't your soulmate client. And maybe there was frustration. Maybe you didn't connect. Maybe you weren't aligned in your values when you were working together. So instead of looking at that situation of a bad review or a negative testimonial, look at it as an opportunity for content, to create content around that, how it made you feel. Show the inside of you. Show your your listeners your, or your, your audience, your, your followers, how that made you feel and what you're going to do to improve every single one of the those reviews that you get positive and negative is an opportunity to evaluate your business and look at it as an opportunity versus an obstacle and an opportunity to learn and grow okay so i wanted to emphasize that that it's not it may be a challenge. You may see this as, oh my gosh, I, 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 I can't go forward. Obviously, if I didn't serve this person, then, and I failed this person, I, I'm not meant to be doing what I'm doing. Again, that's doubt coming into the mind. And the more doubt, the more negative thoughts that you have around that, instead of blessing it and releasing it and seeing it as an opportunity to grow, you're more likely to hang out in that negative mindset and you'll end up procrastinating. You'll stop creating content. You will not be booking discovery calls because you'll be sitting in a place of fear of signing the right person. So flip the switch on that conversation. See it as an opportunity, not an obstacle for moving forward in your business. Every single opportunity, every single circumstance, challenge, situation is an opportunity for learning and growing. So please always look at it that way. <laughs> I, I just, I'm so passionate about this because I've seen how transforming my mind and my thoughts around these types of, of situations has really made everything go more smoothly, more positive, and allowed me so much growth that the doubts uh, of course, they're always there, but they're not on the surface anymore. And if they do arise, I'm able to challenge them right away versus having them hanging around and staying stuck in my head and holding me back or having me feel that that anxiety and fear and, and overwhelm instead of moving forward progressively. So much of everything that we do in our life and our businesses is based on perception you could experience something or we could experience the same exact situa situation. You could you could have that perception that this is negative and it's a failure and it's awful and nothing good can come from this. Whereas I may see it as an opportunity and perceive it as, as something good because I know that the ultimate outcome is gonna be positive. We're gonna experience all these bumps in the road along our journey. That's just natural. We're not here on earth to have everything perfect. We're here on earth to, you know, follow God's calling, to obey the commandments, but we're not here to have a perfect journey. So the better we can learn to, or I guess the faster we can learn to look at these challenges as opportunities instead of obstacles, obstacles, the better off we're going to be. Okay. So here's another example. What if someone betrays you, either personally or professionally? I mean, professionally, we can kind of loop back to that negative review or testimonial, but it could be something else as well. It could be somebody stealing your business model. It could be someone you were in a mastermind with that is now doing exactly what you're doing and targeting the same exact audience. There are ways we can look at this and to see opportunity instead of obstacles. First of all, if someone has betrayed you, chances are they're not your soulmate client, they're not your soulmate friend, they're not your soulmate person to have in your life. If you look back on all of the experiences you've had with that person, chances are there were red flags that maybe you ignored because you were not in the place to see them at, the, at that time, but now they're, they've surfaced. Now you know that that person is not aligned with your values, that person truly doesn't care about you, and that person is not the person that you want as your wingman going forward in your life. This is an opportunity to learn and it's an opportunity to grow in terms of 
identifying those people that you truly want to spend your time with, that you want to know have aligned their values with your values, that you are on the same playing field in terms of life and business goals. There's a difference between those relationships that weigh you down and hold you back versus those relationships that support you, hold you up, give you confidence and move you forward versus net versus backwards. So when you're looking at that opportunity or that experience of someone betraying you in life or business, look at it as an opportunity, one, to forgive them and to forgive yourself for letting yourself get sucked into whatever behaviors they were involved with in terms of you and your relationship with them. Make sure that you're giving yourself that great grace to look at this as, you know, a mistake that now serves a purpose, a, a negative experience that now serves a purpose versus serving shame. And it's very easy to go down that path of shame whenever you have been betrayed by someone because you're disappointed in yourself. You're embarrassed that you got sucked into their behaviors or their actions. You're, you're embarrassed or ashamed because you trusted them when they really weren't trustworthy. There's a million scenarios that we could label here or, or, or bring to the surface here. But the reality is that whatever that situation was, you don't have control of them. You don't have control of anybody else except for yourself and your perception of the situation and how you're going to handle it going forward. So give yourself the grace to forgive them, to move forward and look at this as a learning opportunity so that going forward in the future, you are evaluating people You before you bring them into your inner circle. You are aligning yourself with, or you're aligning people, how can I say this more gracefully? Um, you are aligned with your values, which means you are seeking out people in, to be in your circle that are also in alignment with their values and your values are similar or the same. That's not to say you can't be with someone who has totally different values, but you know that if you are friends with someone or you're bringing someone into your business, a, a, an employee, a team member, or a client, they are adhering to their values, which means that they're going to respect that you adhere to your values. So look at these situations as not obstacles. They're not gonna ruin your life. They are a bump in the road, like I said before, and you now have an opportunity to learn, grow, and move forward faster because of that experience. And then, you know, the last thing I wanna bring up, the fourth example that I have is when you make a mistake, big or small, we all make mistakes. But making a mistake does not mean we have failed. I personally don't believe in failure. I think I said this at the top of the, the training. I believe that if we make a mistake, it's an opportunity for us to learn, change course, redirect ourselves, grow, and move forward. Versus failing is really letting everything down, everyone down. And I really don't believe that happens because when something when something happens, no matter how negative, no matter the, the gravity of the mistake, it's an opportunity for us to learn. And anytime there's an opportunity to learn, we can feel blessed and we can feel grace and we can feel confidence to move forward instead of just letting those mistakes weigh on us. Again, a mistake is an opportunity to, to find purpose, to redirect yourself, to realign yourself versus staying stuck in that muck and mire of whatever that mistake was. I know this is, this is hard and it takes practice, but the one key thing that you can do is when you have experienced something, either an interaction with someone, a mistake you've made, that bad review, a discovery call that didn't convert, whatever the situation is, and there's a million others out there that we could bring into play here, but I wanted to keep it somewhat short and concise because I think these are examples that can be extrapolated out to other things in life. The, the important thing is that you recognize when those negative thoughts are consuming you. You Once you recognize them and you know, you've caught them, you, you know they're there, then you can challenge them. 
Are they realistic? Are you being rational? Would someone you love and respect who is, that you see is very successful and constantly positive, would they be feeling and thinking the same exact way you are around this situation? If the answer to that is no, then change that thought, get rid of it. It's not serving you. And if it's not serving you for growth and opportunity for your future, then it's not a thought you should be letting fester around in your mind to bring you down and bring in shame and judgment upon yourself. Because all that's gonna do is create fear that's gonna hold you back in the future from future experiences and future relationships. Once you have done this exercise multiple times, because yes, we do make mistakes multiple times, we do have negative experiences almost every single day that we could downward spiral emotionally on and let negative thoughts drag us back, or we can look at them as opportunities to, to grow. And so the more you do this exercise of catching those, those thoughts, challenging them and changing them, the more confidence you're gonna have. You're gonna control, be able to control your thoughts a lot earlier on in situations when they arise, and you're gonna then have more confidence going forward in how you're gonna be able to handle negative situations. So I encourage you to practice that model. Um, I think that you know what it means that to to see obstacles as opportunities is really that you have an opportunity to have more control over every aspect of your life because we know that our thoughts control our emotions and our feelings and our emotions and feelings control our actions and behaviors. So if you're navigating those negative thoughts and seeing things as opportunities instead of obstacles, you're going to have a lot more positive thoughts, you're gonna have a lot more positive feelings and emotions and therefore you're not gonna be stuck in fear, anxiety, frustration, overwhelm, lack of motivation, lack of confidence. Instead, you're gonna have the, the opposite of all of those things positive. And so you're going to want to take action, to put yourself out there, to, to build your, your life, your business, follow your purpose in the way that God has called you to do. So it does take discipline. Like I said, the exercise that I suggested where you catch challenge and change those thoughts to get more control and more self-confidence is not something that you do once. It's something that you have to do daily. It Every time a negative situation comes up, it's important to get out your pen and paper and write down what the experience was, evaluate it, challenge it, challenge your thoughts around it, and then just make sure that you're changing the scenario to the positive so that you can move forward. I wanna leave you with two Bible verses as you move through the rest of this week and the rest of your journey. Philippians 4.13, I can do anything through him who gives me strength. So as you're experiencing any of these negative experiences, situations, circumstances, mistakes, whatever they are, look at that opportunity to go straight to the big guy because he is your forever wingman and he will give you strength to get through and he will guide your thoughts if you ask him to. And then the other one is Jeremiah 29 11, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. So I love that verse because it just kind of keeps me grounded that, okay, none of these things are happening to me. They are happening for me. And that is a mindset shift that if you can make that, if you can start to see that things don't happen to you, they happen for you, that things are not obstacles that are in your way that you cannot get around. They are opportunities for you to learn and grow and become better. Then you are going to have a much more joyful, peaceful, and purposeful life. So I hope that you guys found this helpful. I would love to hear from you to see if you're using this this um, practice, I guess I'll say, this model. Um, I would love to hear your thoughts, if it's working for you, if you have any other um, challenges. As always, there is that opportunity for you to jump on a discovery call with me. So if you are struggling with moving the needle forward on your business, if you are struggling with mindset, not sure where to begin, maybe you're stuck in that five figure mark, but you wanna jump to six and you are you just need some guidance on how you can scale, maybe somebody's eyes on the back end of your business, 
schedule a discovery call with me. I'm always here for you and I would love to get to know more about you, more about your business, more about your needs. And as I said at the top of the show, it's always an opportunity to serve. So I appreciate that any single time I can get that. And lastly, as we round up, I want to share with you, I'm going to be doing a free masterclass June, I had to think about what month it is, June 21st, 22nd, and 23rd at 12 p.m. Eastern time, Eastern time each day. So that's June 21st, June 22nd, June 23rd at 12 p.m. Eastern time, all three days. And we are going to be talking about, I'm going to be teaching my purpose to results method. We're going to be diving into mindset, mindset um, techniques, tactics to navigate those barriers that you're experiencing. We're going to be talking about how to build a personal brand that is going to lend to sharing your story, but sharing your story effectively to help you identify and connect with your ideal audience. I have a new perspective on your ideal client, your soulmate client, and how to discover who they are. Totally different than what you're hearing out there. You do not need to know every single detail about them, what kind of handbag they're Purchasing, I used to, I used to fall into that belief, and I what I've discovered is that there's a whole different way to identify who your your soulmate client is, and I think it's a lot better than following it, falling into that trap of having to know every single detail and totally stressing out about who who falls into your niche or your area of expertise. So we're gonna be diving into that. We're gonna be talking about the tech tools, systems, and all those things on the back end of your business that you can do to help things run smoothly, create processes, automate what SEO is, how to use SEO for your business. So we're gonna be really diving into a ton of detail in these three trainings. So I encourage you to register. I will put the registration link in the um, comments or in the show notes and w if you want to go straight there now the it's just the robin graham.com forward slash free masterclass and it should come up and you can register right there on that web page all right thanks for being here everybody i appreciate you and i'll see you next week for another training